So in today's video, I actually don't have like a script or anything, but what I want to talk about is the science of language learning and how the science of language learning allowed me to 10x my language learning myself. So what I'm trying to say here is that I use uh, scientific methods for learning languages that allow me to progress at a rate that is much, much, much faster than most people. And the way I use this is that, well, I don't have a lot of time with my job, with my responsibilities. So I only invest 15 to 30 minutes daily to learning languages. And yet I'm able to learn at a very fast rate. Now, the proof of this is, well, I'm talking to you right now in English and it's not my native language. Uh, my native language is French. I live in Tahiti. And so, you know, I'm speaking to you in English and I hope you'll agree that I speak decently in English. And, you know, yeah, I studied English in school, but, you know, at the end of high school, of high school, I had, I would say, a decent level of English, but I was nowhere near the level I have right now. So that's what you have to keep in mind. All of the gains that I have made have been due to scientific methods that I have applied over time. I can also have conversations in Japanese. You know, I can. I just uh, actually just uh, 30 minutes ago, I was on a, on a line call with a Japanese person, just talking about uh, the Olympics. About uh, you know, I just made bagels, so I talked about that, and no problem. Uh, back in the days when I lived in Switzerland. I could have fluent conversations in Italian. Now, I have to say I have forgotten quite a bit because I'm not doing any more work in Italian, but I was really good in Italian. So all of this is the result of, you know, years of applying those scientific methods, methods of language learning that are actually proven to speed up your learning. And so if you don't have time, if you want to, you know, click away on some video on YouTube, you know, about uh, funny cats or, or whatever it is, and you think you don't have time to spend five minutes and invest your time in, you know, watching t this video, learn about scientific methods, and you're going to be spending a whole lot of time using ineffective methods for learning your target language. So hear me out. Now, the first thing you need to understand is that there is sort of a common ground the uh, sort of common points for all effective language learning methods. There are two things that determine any language learning method that has been proven by scientists, by, excuse me, by language learning researchers, what is called uh, second language acquisition uh, scientists or researchers. So there are two things that really matter. Number one is repetition. I'm gonna talk about the details after, but number one is repetition number two is depth of mental processing now those two things are really the key components of any good methods so whenever you whenever someone on youtube or on the internet tells you oh you know i, I use this method to become fluent in in this language you should ask yourself does this method method contain enough repetition and enough uh, deep mental processing. Now, let me explain more in detail because it's a little bit obscure. So the first criterion here, the first um, sort of component of any effective language learning method, according to the research that is out there right now, is repetition, specifically spaced repetition. If you want to be able to learn a language, there are lots of pieces of information that you need to master. So, you know, words, sentences, grammatical structures, sort of individual uh, pronunciations of, you know, hard words that are unfamiliar to you depending on your native language, uh, you know, idioms, stuff like that. So all of this are sort of tokens, you know, pieces of information that you need to master if you want to be able to speak, you know, to, to just interact in, in the language that you're learning. The thing is that because there are so many pieces of information, you cannot just consume one piece of information, you know, just like read about a vocabulary word in the book and expect to retain it that's not possible. You need to be given enough opportunities for repetition such that that piece of information will be actually engraved in your brain in the long term. What you need to understand also is that the, the biggest problem in language learning by far is not learning new things. 
You can learn new things. I can learn new things. Anyone can learn new things. Uh, the real problem is, well, if I learn something new, am I going to remember it the day after? in one week, in one month? For most people, the answer is no. And the main reason is they're not getting enough repetition of the same pieces of information over time. So how do you do this? How do you get enough repetition of uh, the same pieces of information? Well, one solution that a lot of people use, a lot of people on YouTube, those so-called uh, polyglots is that they just immerse themselves completely. They spend you know 10 hours a day just learning the language, uh, like learning Japanese or Chinese uh, or whatever language, and they just listen to it all the time or they read it all the time. They just spend a lot of hours. And if you have that amount of time, then you know it's fine. You can actually learn the language doing that. You're going to get a lot of repetition of the same vocabulary, sentences, grammatical structures, and so on. But how about normal folks, like the average Joe, like uh, you and me? We only have 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes every single day to dedicate to language learning. We can't like spend you know, 10 hours a day. We have a full-time job and responsibilities. We need to do the laundry and cook and all that. So the solution here is to my personal uh, favorite, like the most time effective method is to use what is called an SRS. An SRS is a spaced repetition system. What a spaced repetition system is, it's essentially a flashcard application that runs on your computer or on your smartphone. You can create flashcards and isolate those individual pieces of information. So like, you know, words, unknown uh, sentences, grammatical structures, and you learn them. And then the SRS, so the piece of software is going to take care of the scheduling for you. So by scheduling, I mean that it's going to give you reviews on every single day that are placed strategically at you know, certain points in time so that you get enough repetition at exactly the right intervals so that you, you uh, actually remember every single piece of information in the long term. And those are smart algorithms that are used to uh, program those uh, the, the, the software, and it's really, really effective. So flashcard applications. Now, if you're curious of like what kind of flashcard application you should be using, just leave me a comment below. I'm, I always answer the comments. The second thing now, we, we talked about repetition, we talked about you know space repetition, getting enough repetition, but the second thing is depth of mental processing. Now, Okay, depth of mental processing is really a fancy expression just to say when you encounter a piece of information in your target language, it needs to be presented to you in such a way that later in time when you encounter that same piece of information, that piece of information is actually already ingra ingrained in your brain very deeply, you know, a deep level of mental processing. What this really means is that you need to be using the right techniques to memorize the words, the sentences, the grammatical structures better. And so what you need to understand is that learning, you know, just the science of learning in general, not just language learning. One of the most important things that you need to understand is that, is that learning is not about putting things in your brain. In order to learn, you need to get things out of your brain. Uh, what I mean by that is, I'll give you a concrete example. If you have, you know, like I said, and like uh, when you have to get enough repetitions, just use those flashcard systems. You have flashcards and you're trying to learn, say, Japanese. And you have the English, like an English sentence uh, on the front of the flashcard and you have the translation in Japanese at the back. And so you, uh, I mean, no, the opposite. You have the Japanese on the front of the flashcard and the English translation on the back. You read the Japanese and you think to yourself, okay, um, how do I say this? Uh, I mean, what is a translation in English? And then you think to yourself, oh, okay, that's what it means in English. That is what is called recognition. And this is a very shallow way of uh, processing information, meaning that the, the sentence in Japanese, you're not going to remember it very well because all you did was you recognized it. You know, you absorbed some, some Japanese. You put it in your brain. What you should really do is do the opposite. You have on the front the sentence in English, 
and on the back you have the sentence in Japanese. And what that allows you to do is you take a look at the sentence on the front of the flashcard and it's in English and you try to get it out of your brain like the translation in Japanese. You just read the sentence in English and think to yourself, okay, how do I say this in Japanese? And if you manage to do this, if you recall it successfully, you get it out of your brain, this actually reinforces the, the, the paths in your brains, the neuronal, I think it's called neuronal paths in your brain that are responsible for you know this piece of information yeah that's that's kind of you know approximate science i'm not a neuroscientist or anything but that's what it is roughly when you get information out of your brain by trying to recall it this information is going to become stronger because you know that's the way it is so there you go the science of language learning has a lot of components but at its basis it's those two things repetition and uh, depth of mental processing. I'm going to be talking a lot more about the science of language learning in uh, future videos. If you want to learn, if you want to be notified of those videos, click the subscribe button. There's no trap here. Just want to, you know, have more subscribers so we can be a lot more. And that's it. I'll see you in the next video.